Many thanks for taking time to watch this video. We will cover the Sierra Wireless MG90 router. We'll cover what comes in the box and the different parts of the router itself. We'll get started by covering what comes in the box. The MG90 is a highly customizable product, so what's in the box you receive may differ, but here are some common items. The router itself is quite heavy, so care and caution should be taken when you mount it. This includes using screws that are designed to handle your particular environments. There are four mounting holes to allow you to securely install the device. To power the device, most users will use DC power, and there is a 10 foot or 3 meter cable provided. AC power, which is often used for bench testing, is also readily available. There is an SMA wrench to install your antennas. Always be sure not to over tighten. Finally, there's a quick start guide which provides some basic setup and usage information. In addition, there are some valuable accessories that may be purchased to enhance the usability of your device. These include antennas, mounting brackets, and input output cables. Starting from the top left corner, there is a port for your GNSS or GPS antenna. This allows the device to receive signal to be able to provide its accurate location. The next two antenna connectors are for your first cellular connection. As a reminder, the device can use two different cellular connections at the same time. As we always say, use two antennas for each cellular connection as it creates a desired signal environment called diversity. The first of the two available Wi-Fi connections is next and there are three antenna ports to attach your desired antennas. Using three antennas for each Wi-Fi signal ensures maximum performance for your application and is highly recommended. As there are many devices that may possibly connect to the MG90 using Bluetooth, there is a port to connect an external Bluetooth antenna for better reception. The next two set of ports are for connecting additional connections. The first is the second cellular connection, which provides an extra layer of diversity while the second is for a second separate Wi-Fi network. Moving to the bottom left corner, you have the available RJ45 or Ethernet ports. There are five available, with the six being an auxiliary port. We will cover the LED lights for these Ethernet ports a bit later in the video. Moving to the right, you have the two USB ports for attaching USB-based devices. As a friendly reminder, USB may not be an ideal choice for many mobile or rugged applications as it does not have a native locking mechanism. Next is the 9-pin RS-232 serial port. This port is still heavily used, especially in many industrial applications. There is a reset button, which is used to either reprogram or to reset the device to work as desired. A ground is provided to protect your device. And finally, there's the power connector. There are different options to power the MG90 based on your application's needs. To access the different pins, you need to remove the cover. Once there, you will see four pins. Pin 1, which is red, is for power. Pin 2, which is black, is the ground. Pin 3, which is white, is used to sense the status of your ignition. And pin 4, which is green, is for input outputs, which can be a great way to detect the status of key items around your device. We will cover these six LED lights in the next part. So we will start with the reset button, which is used to return the router into a more desired state if it is not functioning as desired. In order to attain a cellular connection, an active SIM card or cards needs to be inserted. You start by removing the plate with a screwdriver. Once this is done, you would insert your cards and be sure to replace the SIM door to complete the exercise. The LED lights are a wonderful way to understand the current status of your device. There are six on the MG90. Starting from the left, there is the GNSS light. This light will indicate the status of your GNSS or GPS signal. Solid green means the satellites are available and the dead reckoning function is inactive. Solid blue indicates that satellites are available and dead reckoning is active. A flashing blue means that no satellites are available and dead reckoning is active, while a flashing amber means that no satellites are available and dead reckoning is not active. 
If the lights are off completely, you have disabled the GNSS function entirely. The next light is the Wi-Fi status light. A solid green tells you that Wi-Fi is enabled and you are not currently connected to an access point. When the green light is flashing, you are sending and receiving over Wi-Fi while not connected to an access point. Solid amber means you're using Wi-Fi while connected to an access point, while a flashing amber means that data is currently being sent or received over Wi-Fi using an access point. Finally, if the light is off completely, Wi-Fi is not currently enabled. The third light we will cover is the network light. It has four possible states. If it is off, there is no current network connection. Flashing amber means that it is in the process of connecting to a network. Once connected, it will flash green if it's connecting over a WAN, like cellular, Wi-Fi, or Ethernet, or solid green if you are using a VPN-based connection. The signal light is ideal for understanding the level of cellular reception you are currently receiving. Red is not optimal, as it means your signal is poor, like having zero or one bar on your phone. Solid amber is a bit better, as it means an average signal, more like two to three bars on your phone. You always want to strive for solid green, as this means an optimal signal, like having four to five bars on your phone. The activity light only has two possible states. If it is flashing green, you are sending or receiving data over one of the WAN connections, and if it's off, you are not currently doing so. The final light is the power light, which will indicate the current power status of the MG90. Solid green is definitely preferred as it indicates power is present and the device is currently in its normal operation mode. Flashing green happens when there is power present and the device is booting up. You may also see solid amber when the device has entered into a standby mode. Flashing red indicates an issue and it does it based on the frequency of the blink. A slow blink, which is once per second, tells you that the current temperature is out of the desired operating range while a faster blink, four times per second, alerts to the voltage being outside of the operating range. Finally, no light means there is no power being delivered. There are four occasions when all six lights will blink in sequence. This is known as a chase. A green LED chase informs that the radio module or GNSS firmware is currently being updated. If the device's overall software is being updated, there will be an amber LED chase, while a blue LED chase will occur during an update of the MCU. During any of these updates, be sure not to disconnect the power. The last chase will be solid white, which indicates a factory default reset is currently in progress. There are also two LED lights on each of the Ethernet ports, the activity light and the connection speed light. The activity light, which is on the right, indicates the activity of that port. Solid amber means you have a link established, while it will flash amber if there is data currently being sent or received. The light will be off if there is no link established. The left LED light indicates the Ethernet connection speed. Solid green means really fast, as it indicates 1 gigabyte per second, while no light means 10 slash 100 megabits per second. Many thanks for taking time to watch this short video. We would love to hear from you and welcome you to reach out to us using one of the methods on the screen.